today I'm going to show you how to create an iOS 8 icon in Photoshop. That's a mouthful. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And this is gonna be a cool episode. We're not doing anything photography related. We're actually creating an icon for an app that you would see in iOS 8. It's gonna be a great episode. We're gonna start off by showing you how to use the rounded rectangle tool and how to adjust your radius to get it perfect to the iOS 8 app size. Then we're gonna sample colors from the actual iOS 8 apps and use them to create a custom gradient that we're going to color the rounded rectangle. Next, we're gonna position our logo right in the center and I'm gonna show you some great alignment tools that you can use to make sure you've got it in the perfect place. And to finish it off, we're gonna add a drop shadow, turn the background transparent, and then save this out as a PNG with transparency. It's gonna be a fun episode. We're splitting it up into multiple different parts and in our first section, we're going to be creating a rounded rectangle. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. The first thing I need to do is create a new document and we want it to be a perfect square. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command N for new. And we're gonna choose a width and a height of both 1000 pixels. So we're just gonna type in 1000 and 1000 right there. All right, let's hit okay. And now we have our document. I'm gonna hit F to full screen this out. All right, let's make sure our background is selected in the right color. We're gonna use a dark gray for now. Okay, so we've got our background. They're ready to go. This is 1000 by 1000 pixels. We're ready to create our rounded rectangle. So newer versions of Photoshop, including CC and CC 2014, have the rounded rectangle tool. So I'm gonna click on the rounded rectangle tool. And this is a really, really great tool. I'm gonna to show you there's a dialog box that'll pop up with a lot of options here. Basically, I can click up on the top left of my image. There we go. And I'm gonna drag this to the bottom right of my image, just like that. Now by default, I don't have much of a radius here. Let's just zoom in so you can see the radius right here around the edge. It's a very small radius. Not only that, but I've got a black, what's called a stroke on the edge, which is creating that black line. So I wanna get rid of those two things. Now, I have this properties window with my rounded rectangle tool, which is gonna help a lot. So I'm gonna change my width and my height. We're gonna go ahead and change the size of this. Our entire document is a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. So I'm gonna type 950 and hit enter, and we're gonna type in 950 here and hit enter as well. Okay, so now this is 900 by 900, 950 by 950 pixels. All right, let's go ahead and put our alignment here at 25 pixels on the x-axis, all right, and then 25 pixels on the y-axis. And this is going to center my shape as well. So it's gonna push it over 25 pixels. Remember, we've got a full document is 1,000 pixels, and the size of this is 950. So we've got 50 more pixels left in my document, and 50 divided by two is 25. You could just move this around with the move tool too, but I feel like getting a little fancy with it. Okay. Next we have down here at the bottom our radiuses. So I can simply click on any of these icons and drag these from the left to the right and it's going to change the radius of my rounded rectangle, which is great. You can go to all the way pretty much to a circle or back it up a little bit more. Now I'm gonna change my radius to 140 pixels. I've already done this and 140 is the size that I want for my app. Now, let's say you wanted different sizes for different corners. You can click this chain link, and then I could have one of my corners be a different radius than the others. So get in here and play around a little bit. Okay, now we have two other options here before we move from the rounded rectangle tool. The first one is our fill. I could choose to fill it with a red color, whatever color I'd like, but in this case, I'm gonna click here and then click on this little slash, which is not gonna fill it with any color. Over here, we have our stroke color. I could choose a blue color, a red color. You can see the stroke is changing. I can change the size of my stroke as well. I can even change what I'd like my stroke to look like. So a lot of options here. In this case, I don't want a stroke, so I'm just gonna change this back to normal, and we're gonna bring our size back to something like 13, and then my stroke color, we're going to hit that slash key as well. Okay. Now, when I click off of there, we're not gonna be able to see anything, but keep in mind, if I make my background 
invisible. There we go. You know what? Let's go ahead and fill this guy. Yeah, let's fill this one with white for now. There we go. Okay, so if I make my background invisible, we can see our rounded rectangle is right here and we're ready to go ahead and add some colors. So you can see creating a rounded rectangle is really easy and all those tools are right there for you. Now we're gonna jump in and take a gradient sample from the actual iOS screen and use that to color our rectangle. So I wanna use the exact colors from the iOS screen. So what I've done is gone onto Google and found an image that someone did of a screen capture of the iOS screen, brought that into Photoshop, and now we're gonna use it to sample colors. So here's our image, and all I need to do is create a gradient on the background. So let's zoom in here, and I've got a weather app. This is, these are the colors that I'd like my, my icon to be, these, this dark blue and a light blue. So what I'm gonna do is create a custom gradient that contains those colors. So let's click on our gradient tool. You can hit G for the gradient tool or simply click right there. Now in this case, I'm gonna just click on this preset, the black to white preset. There we go. You can see it's gonna bring black on the left side and white on the right side. Now if I'd like to change these colors, all I have to do is click right here on that little paint bucket. It's going to allow me to change the color. So click here to select, click on our color, and then with our color, you can go ahead and choose your own colors if you'd like, or you can just simply go over to your document. It's gonna be an eyedropper. There we go. Click there and it'll pull that exact color. So we're gonna hit okay. So this color is now the exact same as that color. We're gonna do the same for white. So let's click on our white, click on our color, and then eyedropper tool. I don't have to press anything for it to become the eyedropper tool. It will automatically become the eyedropper tool if the color picker is available. We're gonna click on this color now. There we go. So we have the same gradient here that's in our weather icon. So let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna type app background. All right, there we go, and hit new. So now this is saved in my gradient editor. So if I wanna use this on a different document, it's not a problem. I just go back to my gradient editor and it's available for me. All right, so we're gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna go back to my other document here we have our rounded rectangle. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer on top of our rounded rectangle, and then I'm going to clip this layer to the rounded rectangle, meaning it's only going to affect what's on the rectangle itself. So, right click, we're gonna to go to create a clipping mask. Perfect. Now we're ready to use that gradient we just made. So we're gonna go up to our gradient editor. I'm gonna click right here on app background. We'll hit okay. And then with my gradient, I'm going to choose the linear gradient, which is right here. It's going to change from one color to another one linearly. That's why it's called the linear gradient. All right, now we're just gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna click from the bottom and go to the top. This is gonna make sure, holding down shift, make sure that it's going to be straight up and down and it's not going to be at an angle. There we go. And click there and we're good to go. So we have this gradient that we made from the gradient editor and now it's being applied to our rounded rectangle. Now keep in mind, if I were to unclip this layer, you can see it fills everything. So make sure that it's a clipping mask. Again, right click on it, go to create clipping mask, and it's gonna be only visible where the rounded rectangle is visible. All right, we're perfectly set up for our icon. So in this section, we sampled colors from an iOS icon. Then we created a custom gradient using those colors. And then last, we applied that custom gradient onto our rounded rectangle. In the next section, we're gonna load our icon or our shape onto the app. No app is complete without a logo. And lucky for me, I know a great logo. It's the Flurn logo. So that's what we're gonna to use to put on this app. All right, let's go ahead and exit out this full screen. You can do that by hitting F and we're gonna click on our iOS 8 sample. We can go ahead and close that out. We don't need it anymore. And now we're going to go to our logo. So I've already opened this up. This is a Flurn camera white logo. Okay, now what we're gonna do is place the logo inside of the app. So let's go ahead and click and drag it into the app. And you can see it places it, well, pretty much wherever it wants. But we're gonna show you ways to actually get it in the center of your document. The first thing we wanna do is full screen our documents. We can actually see what we're doing. So hit F to full screen the document. Now, it's okay that my app is clipped to the rounded rectangle, again, because we only want it visible where the rounded rectangle is anyway. 
So let's say I want to go ahead and align this icon to where it's not right there. I want to put it in the exact middle, and I don't feel like just using my mouse, okay? What we're going to do is I'm going to actually select everything on my document. So we're going to do Control or Command A. It's going to select everything. You could also go to Select and then down to All. Okay, now that we have everything selected, I'm going to click on the Move tool. And the Move tool has alignment tools built into it. So these are right up here at the top. I know we're covering a ton. You're doing great. <laughs> these are right up here at the top. So we selected everything, meaning now everything is going to try to align itself with the entire border of my image. So this icon is now aligning itself with everything. That's basically what we've done. Okay. With our Move tool, I'm going to now click on my alignment tools that are up here on the top. So we have a right alignment tool. Let's say I click there, it's going to align this to the right. If I click on the bottom, it's going to align it to the bottom and the right. If I click on this left, it'll do the left. Click on the top, it'll do the top. So if we want to put this in the exact center, just do our horizontal center and then our vertical center, and there we go. It's perfectly centered with our document. Now, I'm going to size it, hit Control or Command T, and we're going to go ahead and scale this down just a little bit to, there we go, right about there, and hit Enter. Command D to deselect, and we're good to go. So in this section, we added a logo onto the image and then used how to learn selections as well as the Move tool to align that logo to the exact center of our app. Now it's time to finish the icon off and save it for the web. So the first thing we want to do is create a drop shadow on our icon. I'm going to do so by clicking on my rounded rectangle, going to FX, and then going down to Blending Options. All right, now my blending options are going to allow me to actually create a drop shadow that's going to make it look like the app is sitting on an iOS screen. So with this open, there we go, our layer style, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom and click on Drop Shadow. And you can see it created a drop shadow, but it was pretty small by default. So let's click on our drop shadow and change our settings. I'm going to bring my size a little bit larger. There we go. We can start to see our size actually be affected by right down here. I'm going to change my distance as well. Let's zoom out so we can see what we actually want on our image. So it's changing your size and your distance is just going to kind of spread it out a little bit and make it look like it's a little bit more real. All right, that looks great. And I'm going to bring my opacity down just a little bit. All right, let's hit OK. Now this looks great, but I do want to see what this is going to look like on a white background. So let's go ahead and turn our background back visible again. And then I've got a great trick. Our background here is still this dark gray color, but I want to see what it looks like on perfect white. So I'm going to right click here, I'm going to go to select custom color, and then we're going to choose white. There we go. And now we can see what it looks like pure on white, which is great. Everything is almost there, but we can see my drop shadow extends to the edge of my document just a little bit, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to my, back to my drop shadow, and we're going to take our size down just a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and take our opacity down a little bit as well, and our distance. All right, there we go. And now we can see it's not extending to the edge. Let's show the before and the after. Here you can see it's getting cut off, the drop shadow, and the after, we're, we're making sure we're in the boundary of our image, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and save this out and view it on the web. So to save, we want to set this up as a PNG file, which supports transparency in the background. So let's go ahead and make our background invisible. There we go. You can see our little dotted matrix here little square matrix. That means that it's going to be transparent when you save it out. So now that we have our icon, we still have our drop shadow. We can see it on there. We have a transparent background. We're ready to save. So let's go to File and down here to Save for Web. OK, now your default option is probably going to be set to JPEG, which does not support a transparent background. We want to make sure we change this from JPEG down to PNG. It's going to take a second, but this is going to allow us to actually have a transparent background with our image. There we go. So we've got a transparent background, we've got our drop shadow, we've got our app, everything looks great. It's a thousand by a thousand pixels. And you know what? I want to go ahead and preview this. I want to see what this is actually going to look like on a web page. So let's hit this preview button and it's going to load whatever your native browser is. In this case, it's going to be Google Chrome and it's going to pull it into a new window. 
So there we can see this is what our actual logo is going to look like on the internet. You can see it's huge right now, but I would recommend creating a logo that is large so if you need to scale it down, you keep your good resolution. If you need to scale a logo up every time you're gonna use it, you're really gonna suffer and it's gonna become pixelated, which you do not want. So now that we've seen that our logo looks good on the web, let's go back into Photoshop and we're gonna go ahead and save this out as a PNG. Now, if you did wanna change your sizes, you can do this right here in the dialog. Let's say I wanna make it 500 by 500 pixels, just to see what that would look like. You can hit the preview button there and it's gonna load up as 500 by 500 pixels right there. So back into Photoshop, let's go ahead and save this out. All right, we'll go ahead and select our episode. All right, and we'll just call this Flurn iOS 8 icon.png, that part is important. Hit save, and we are good to go. And that's all there is to it, guys. Creating an iOS app is really simple to do in Photoshop. You can use your own logos to create your own app icon. We started today's episode by creating a new document that's 1000 by 1000 pixels. This is gonna be large enough to create our icon. Next, we use the rounded rectangle tool to create the shape of our icon. We used a radius of 140 pixels all the way around, which is perfect for the app size. After that, we showed you how to sample colors from the original iOS 8 icons and then use those to create a custom gradient. Then we filled our icon space with that gradient. Next, we brought in our logo and I showed you how to use the alignment tools in Photoshop to center it perfectly. And to finish the episode, we added a drop shadow, turned the background to transparent, and saved it out as a PNG. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I hope you liked this episode. It's a little fun thing. You know, you can do other things besides other photos in Photoshop, like make icons and pretend like you have an app, which we don't have an app, but maybe we will someday. Anyway, if you like what we're doing here on Flurn and you want to learn more Photoshop and photography from us, just hit that subscribe button on your screen. Super easy to do and we send free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. We're always clickety-clacking on keyboards trying to answer all your questions as well. Thanks again guys. We'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. Just talk like a regular person. That's how you do it. All right. Bam! Bam! Champion. Friday. <laughs> That's what you do. <clears throat> Get it.